Hi, I'm Susie. Welcome to Iron Deficient Chef. This episode's all about bread. Now you might be wondering why we're going to be talking about bread because everyone knows about it and it's everywhere. And what's the point of learning to make bread at home when you can just nip down to your local 7-Eleven and buy a pack for like $1.20? Well the point is that any bag of bread you buy for $1.20 nutritionally isn't worth the plastic bag that it's bought in. And unless you're making fairy bread or something like that, you should never ever really need to buy white sliced. Now, I'm not saying it all has to be whole grain and buckwheat, but the thing is that really good quality bread not only tastes better, but it's better for you. And come on, let's face it, white sliced? That's like a banana skin on the slippery slope to the downfall of society. <laughs> Good evening. Two hours south of Sydney in the sleepy little town of Berry, bakers work through the night creating bread with no yeast, in ovens heated with no electricity. Head baker Matt Sobrajeski talks to Iron Deficient Chef News about the heating of the wood-fired ovens and the baking of the bread from beginning to end. Five o'clock in the morning, um, a bloke comes in, loads the oven with with wood straight down the centre, sets a fire in there, the wood slowly burns from one end down to the other end of the wood. The coals get spread out over the base of the oven. When I come in about 5.30 in the afternoon, I scrape then mop the oven out because the bread actually sits on the floor of the oven. It gets put on the bench, scaled off at certain weights, then shaped up, pre-shapes, which then it goes onto a board, sits on the rack for maybe five to 10 minutes, 20 minutes to give a bit of a rest. Off there, it comes onto the bench. We shape it into the Vienna shape or the cob shape, whichever one we're going for. You can make pretty much all of it, like everything you can make with a knot with a yeast dough, sultanas and currants and whatever you want to put in it. Like we make pizza bases. Savory scroll where you put the different toppings inside, scroll it up and off you go. It gets put upside down into a basket. The shape of the basket sort of gives you the shape of the bread as well. Then from there it gets put on a rack, takes anywhere from half an hour to 45 minutes for it to prove up. It goes onto the peel. About 270 is the ideal heating of the oven sort of process. It's really fiddly, so that's why a lot of bakeries don't use it. But I think that's why we sort of get that distinct sort of taste in the bread. You slash the top of the bread for a number of reasons. One reason is for decoration, so you can tell each loaf apart. If you don't slash it, it cracks the whole like the loaf all over. So slashing it's a really important part. Like, it takes a while to learn. You can tell if they're baked, they give off a hollow sound when you tap them on the bottom. The difference between a normal loaf of bread that you buy at like the supermarket, the supermarket bread's got yeast and the sourdough doesn't, it's got the leaven instead. The starter we've used was started probably five years ago and in that time it, we've kept it alive every day. And what do you feed it? Just flour and water. In between the night we'll mix, mix the leaven up for the next day so it can be kept in like a warm sort of area. It'll ferment and let off gas and slowly rise. The leaven gives off a certain flavour that you know you can taste like right through the bread. The next morning we sent our reporter Susie Spoon to Berry Sourdough Cafe to sample all the great looking bread. The pizza and scrolls did look tempting as did the sweets. But Susie had come for the sourdough which looked so beautiful on display. She ordered coffee and breakfast and about a month's worth of sourdough to take back to Sydney. This has been Tony Nobson for Iron Efficient News. Please take care.